Hi, this is Ryan Neal from the USA offices of Neal's Sathery and Harness, Cowboy Sewing Machines, and High Tech Sewing Machines. And today we're going to do a maintenance video and a little bit of an operational video so you can understand how to work our Model 8020 leather splitting machine a little bit better. So I'm going to have the camera pan in for certain angles here so you can see a little bit better on what we have. You can get a little bit better vantage point on what it is that I'm trying to indicate here. So this machine does require a certain amount of lubrication, although you won't have to lubricate it very frequently, but I will illustrate the points where it does in fact need to be lubricated. So anywhere where you see a red dot on the casting is a good place to lubricate. So where this red dot is right here is a good place to lubricate. There's a red dot right here. That is also a good place to lubricate. I'll have the camera come around over on this side. And you'll see tucked back in the casting there is in fact another red dot that is a good place to lubricate as well on this side of the sewing or this side of the splitting machine you would probably also want to uh, put some gear oil on these gears every once in a while just to keep them moist to make sure that they don't chatter excessively um, coming over to the other side of the splitting machine you'll see that there's a red dot right here in the casting there's also a red dot right here in the casting and then i'll have the camera come over on the other side and you'll see tucked in there is also another red dot. So we do want to, you do want to put some sewing machine oil in those dots, or sorry, in where those red dots are at. Then also uh, on this side, there is another gear assembly and you do want to go ahead and put some 90 weight gear oil or you know, just a good heavyweight gear oil on these gears and then run the machine to make sure that the oil is circulated throughout the gears. Uh, there are also some other lubrication points that are not as clearly marked on the machine and that would be the uh, little gap that exists here between the top roller and the casting journal and then over here on this side there's another gap that exists between the top roller and the casting journal. Those are good places to lubricate. Also where the bottom roller is, the roller that has the teeth on it, you would want to lubricate between the uh, roller and the casting journal right here as well as the roller on this side and the casting journal on that side as well. Uh, there are some <clears throat> springs that are on the side of the machine every once in a while it wouldn't hurt to put a little bit of lubrication on these springs because these springs inside these springs is a, is a shaft so you do want to lubricate those every once in a while. I'll have the camera come a little bit closer and you'll see tucked back here is another large spring every once in a while it wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt to put a few drops of oil on that as well. Uh, there are some more places that you should apply some gear oil and that would be right here where the hand roller or where the uh, roller adjuster mechanism is. It mates to a gear right here. You should also put some gear oil there. On the other side of the machine there is also another gear mechanism right here that you can put a few drops of oil on. And don't forget there is in fact a spring mechanism on this side and another larger spring mechanism behind it. So uh, those are places that you would want to apply oil. Uh, you also would not hurt where, where there are machine surfaces on the machine. For instance, this is the blade hold down bar. Uh, it is not only it is only partially painted, and so you would want to put some gun oil or some sort of preservative oil on this to keep it from rusting because it is a machine surface uh, made of cast iron. Also, the top roller is machined um, but not painted, and so you would want to go ahead and put a light coating of gun oil or something like that on it to stop it from rusting uh, as well. So. Those are the main lubrication points on this machine. Um, other than that, there's really not a whole, a whole lot else uh, that you would need to lubricate on it. So now we're going to talk a little bit about how to adjust the machine and some of the options that are on the machine. We do have, you do have the option to power this machine by hand uh, using the hand crank lever that's on the side of the machine. Now right now we do have this connected to our motor drive unit as well as our speed reducer unit. So if you turn this, it turns a little bit hard. So if you do decide you want to power it by hand, simply remove the belt from the gear reducer unit underneath the sewing machine. Just remove the belt and you will be able to power it by hand much easily, much more easily because it will turn much easier. Um, and you know, enabling you to uh, turn it over by hand a lot better. So uh, then we're going to talk a little bit about how to adjust the machine. So you'll see here and I'll have the camera come down very close so that we can see this gap, this, this uh, light gap that exists between the top roller and the bottom roller. I'm going to turn the uh, crank wheel here. I'm going to turn it in a uh, counter uh, clockwise direction away from me and you'll see <clears throat> that this the distance between the top roller and the bottom roller increases. And so what happens is as this distance increases you're going to see you're going to notice that it's going to split off less and less leather from the bottom of the piece so you in effect get a thinner split. As we bring this roller counterclockwise towards me you'll see that uh, the, roll, the top roller actually drops down 
and that's going to give you a much thicker split. So that's going to tog off a lot more leather from the bottom side of the piece because the top roller is pressing it harder and harder into the uh, bottom roller. So it'll have the effect of taking off a lot of leather. So just remember, and this is this is sort of a micrometric adjustment. You can turn it one gear at a time, so you, or one gear tooth at a time rather. So you can see as I turn this, uh, you can turn it in very small increments. You can split off approximately a half to one ounce at a time on the pieces if you do want to, or or if you do in fact want to split off a lot, you can you know just turn the turn the flywheel here very rapidly um, and in large amounts, and then you'll see that the roller will go up and down um, much more. Um, vigorously and so you can split off a lot more leather so uh, there are some other adjustment points on this machine um, if you want to increase the amount of pressure that the bottom roller squeezes against the leather I'll have the camera pan this direction and you'll see underneath the underneath the machine you'll see that there's an adjuster screw right here and that's used to regulate the tension that's on the bottom roller the amount of pressure by which it squeezes down or squeezes up rather on the leather so in order to increase that tension, you would turn this so that you can press the spring, which is right here. And there is one on the other side as well. So uh, compressing that spring increases the amount of pressure that the bottom roller squeezes against the top roller. There is also a leveling adjustment to level the top roller relative to the, or to level the bottom roller relative to the, to the blade. And those adjustment screws are here and here. Usually the best thing to do is to take a pair of pliers or take a wrench because these are pretty hard to turn by hand. So take a pair of pliers or take a wrench and then you want to go ahead and turn these. And what the objective is, is you want there to be approximately one to one and a half millimeters distance between this bottom roller and the blade itself. That's usually the best position that will ensure that you get the best split. So usually about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half distance between the uh, bottom roller and the blade. And again, this, you, these are, there's, there's two adjuster screws on both sides of this so that you in fact can level one side and then you can level the other side. But ultimately you want about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half clearance between the blade and the bottom roller. Uh, when you, you can remove the blade on this machine for sharpening. And so where you would remove the blade would be by loosening these three, all or these three Allen head bolts here, here, and here. And then on the underside of the machine, I don't know if our camera can get down here and see this. It might be difficult. There are nuts on the back side of these bolts. So you want to go ahead and remove those nuts uh, as you back the bolt out. So, and then what will happen is this top piece, which we call the blade hold down bar, this top piece will actually pick up all the way off the machine. And so then from there, you can just simply remove the blade. The blade is concealed underneath this hold down bar. A lot of people think that this metal color part right here is the blade, but in fact it is not. There is a blade that is concealed underneath this hold down bar. So when you re then you can pull the blade out, sharpen, service it, clean it, or do whatever is required, and then put it back in the machine. Now these adjusters right here <clears throat> are used to adjust the position of the blade relative to the bottom roller. And so these are set, uh, preset from the factory, and there are set nuts that hold these in place. Um, so you shouldn't have to mess with this too much. Just remember when you're ready to take the blade out for sharpening, take these three bolts off, take the hold down bar off, and in fact the blade will come out without having to mess around with these adjuster screws. So just leave these adjuster screws alone. So anyhow, um, that's just a uh, very brief introduction to the service and maintenance on our Model 8020 leather splitter. And my name is Ryan Neal, and I'm from the USA offices of Neal's Saddlery and Harness, Cowboy Sewing Machines, and High Tech Sewing Machines. If you have any additional questions about this machine or you would like to purchase one, please feel free to give me a call at area code 330-692-1418. And I thank you for your time today. Okay.